Hello everybody, it's me, ex-soldier Don, back again, but we're back to where it all began for me as a kid. Back to the original Final Fantasy VII, which has obviously been re-released for PS4, which is what we're playing today, tonight. Um, if you're watching this back as a VOD, uh, any likes or subscribably button presses would be very appreciated. As always, um, routine-wise, I'm thinking we will be doing a Final Fantasy VII OG stream every second Tuesday um, in routine with things, so that's what you can expect to tune in. So in a fortnight's time, we'll be picking up where we leave off from tonight's stream. But for now, I'm going to shut up and let the uh, opening sequence play. Let's go. Hopefully sound-wise that's okay for everyone. Yeah. Bump the battle stuff up. Well, right, here we go. Brings back some nostalgia for me. First things first, let's let our ex-soldier deal with two Shinra guards. If I... Good old turn-based combat. <laughs> How I love it. Also, back in a time when you could name your characters, <laughs> they um, slowly phase this process out. 
if I remember rightly, the last game to include uh, keeping the original character names was uh, Final Fantasy 12, I think. Naturally, we're going to stick with the defaults. For the record as well, I'm playing this mod free, so while it has the... Obviously it's been redone for PS4 with options to speed up, double XP, gill, accumulation, no combat, no battle, no other that stuff. Uh, I'll be playing it exactly as it was, uh, was originally. Right, let's go and help our acquaintances head to the first reactor. Combat on the bridge. It always made me laugh how much better the character models look in the combat scenario compared to the open world or the field area. It is one thing I always found whimsical about this game. Here we go. Now I'll make a point of saying from the outset, um, I am still playing through um, the new reimagining of uh, Final Fantasy 7 uh, remake is done uh, platinumed that but uh, I'm still making my way through rebirth so those of you that jump in in the chat please no spoilers regarding rebirth that would be hugely appreciated uh, while I work through that I was originally planning to wait um, to come back to this game after I'd finished rebirth and seen how that panned out but I thought, nah, you know what, I love this game too much to uh, to wait any longer, so... Um, obviously, I've played this through a billion times, um, so I know the ins and outs of the OG story, so more than happy to talk, to you, talk about that, but do be mindful of others who don't know the story uh, all the way through, don't know how it finishes, and all the bits and bits in between, so do be mindful in chat uh, with regards to that, please. Let's see what Barra wants. Alright, so now we've parted up with Barrett. And the first thing we want to do is move Barrett to the back row as. As with this um, particular combat system, front row, back row is a thing. A uh, party member on the front row will deal more melee damage. Uh, and a party member on the back row will... Um, so, you will deal more melee damage if you're on the front row. But if you're on the back row, you will receive higher defense. Um, Magic usage, however, is completely unaffected as to which row you're on. So you can cast magic from the front row or the back row and it will not make a difference to the damage output. So Barrett being somebody who has a gun arm, of course, is more than fine on the back row.
Also, just for the record, I won't be reading out the dialogue. I know you guys can read it plenty. If I go too fast, obviously, just tell me. I've got no problem slowing things down a little bit. I'm very au fait with the story and the dialogue. So you'll notice Barrett doesn't start with any materia. That leads into being able to show you how the materia system works a bit later on, how stats are affected, depending on the materia you have equipped. But we get to that a bit later. This game is does have a story that I hold very close to my heart in general. Uh, I have a lot of personal um sort of i guess i can relate to cloud in a lot of ways i certainly could when i was younger and as a kid it's one of the re one of the things that drew me um to the franchise really So, of course, enemies also have the front row, back row, back row paradigm as well. So, with that in mind, it does mean that enemies on the back row will take less melee damage. So, any melee characters like Cloud, we want to focus heavily on uh, optimizing him for attacking the front row. Make our way down. Oops. Would you believe, uh, as I understand it, this game was originally intended for the Nintendo systems? But, uh, oh, save point. Let's do that. Seems a novel thing, but once upon a time, back when this originally was released on the uh, placed original PlayStation, we had to purchase memory cards to put in the front of the consoles. Okay, so we want to focus now on some magic. As we've got a machine in the back, so elemental weakness is of course a, a factor as well. I know Barrett can't take these guys out of the front in one shot. So we want to optimize that. There we go. Lovely bit of strategy in the evening. Cheeky potion, happy days. Right. Let's set the bomb. But not without picking up some restore materia first. There we go. It's our first boss. Oops. Again, a mechanical boss, so we're going to focus any magic usage on Bolt. Scorpion Tail, his second strongest attack. Save Cloud's Limit Break for now. Top up Cloud's Health. Oh, bring it in now. Of 
course, in the remake, this is a uh, cursory ability. So both of our boys will get a turn. Oh no, never mind. The, I think I got confused because of the... Uh, yeah, so Barrett's going to attack while his tail's up, and then he's going to laser counter-attack. Which is not so great for uh, Cloud being on the front row. It will top Cloud up once more. Alright, we can resume our attack. That tail laser you will recognise again from Remake if you've played it. Um, <laughs> in the new game, you have to uh, hide behind some debris. With regards to dealing with that. Seems to have no interest in scanning Barrett. Uh, no limit break for Cloud this time. Yeah, that'll do it. Hooray! First boss down. New weapon for Barrett, and time to get out of dodge. With an absurd amount of time. Never in a million years did it even take us ten, close to 10 minutes to get in here. So we'll sort Barrett's weapon out. Can't do anything with materia just yet. Up we go. I anticipate to be out by about with about eight minutes. Eight and a half minutes remaining. It'll take us about a minute to get out. So one thing I didn't do the first time, very first time I played it all those years ago, was come over on here because Jessie, unfortunately, has got her leg stuck. Without her, you can't get out of the reactor. Neat little trick. If you start to run away, your characters will turn around. Yeah, let's live a break, why not? We want these boys out of our way. We'll let Barrett deal with them at the back. Barrett with his upgraded weapon now of an assault gun compared to his Gatling gun starting weapon. So Barrett is now actually capable of one shotting those on the front row. Jesse's having a fun time glitching and walking and sliding up the ladder. <laughs> there we go, more combat encounters. Aha, we've got a back attack this time. Get rid of the sentry guns. Of course, when you're back attacked, uh, it does generally does close to double damage. So being back attacked is bad. Earning the back attack is good. However, it's total chance as to whether that happens. Let's keep going and get out of here. Given that the combat encounter slowed us down, I would say we're probably out of here with about six and a half minutes to spare. Assuming we don't get into, well, it'd be quicker if we didn't get into any other encounters. But if Jesse is left behind there, he can't get out. And then the reactor explodes with you inside. And it's GG, game over. Which happened to me, I'm not afraid to admit, on my very first time playing this game. Back when I was a whopping 10 years old.
Oh, pretty close. Six minutes, 40 left. There you are, we made it. No problem whatsoever, even with three combat encounters on the way. I would love a chocolate biscuit, thank you. Boom, boom. One reactor down. The planet's life extended a fraction, hopefully. I remember as a kid finding the bit with Wedge burning his bum getting hilar being hilarious <laughs> after jumping out of that corridor. <laughs> and here we meet Aerith for the first time. Now in the remake, of course, you are not really given a choice about the whole how do you want a flower thing. There we go, we will buy a flower for Merith. And she'll be very happy about that. We get our first bird's eye view of how run down. The streets of Midgar are. Now, when I originally played this, I did all the combat encounters. Just because I loved that XP. You can choose to just check, pick the options of later and running away continuously. And you will flee each encounter. But of course you miss out on the XP there. If you decide to go down that route. Victory music ran away. That's an interesting one. Hey Matt, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. It's OG time tonight. Appreciate that map. Thank you very much, my dude. Always appreciated. Good to see you. I wonder who that could be running on the roof of the tr train. A 
Angry Barrett. <laughs> yeah, it's very much so, Matt. Back when we thought this was like, oh my god, I can't believe how realistic these graphics are. I don't think I felt that way so much for the character models, but certainly the uh, the background environment. I was wowed by how good Midgar looked. We. Here we go. Time to move on through the train. Uh, you chase off them hoodlums, Barrett. <laughs> A lovely Shinra exec thinking we're riffraff. <laughs> Barrett pays attention. Right, a fun little fact for, for you all. Uh, if you want some additional dialogue, if you didn't know this, keep talking to Wedge a few times. Do you think Wedge has a bright future ahead of him? Well, we want to give him some positivity, don't we? There we go. Now... Don't hold your breath, I know. <laughs> Just be ruthless toward him. Cloud is very cold, though, during this phase of the game. Also, Appy, good to see you, my man. Yeah, gotta love it. Bit of retro, bit of nostalgia. This is back to where uh, my love of Final Fantasy first came about. Yeah, number one reactor is the first one we blew up. It's interesting, isn't it? Each of the sectors originally had a name, but over time everybody just forgot them. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Becomes a thing of nobody remembers um, what their names were. But, fun fact, uh, within Final Fantasy VII, there is quite a lot of Norse mythology references. Um, of course, the city of Midgar um, relates to Middle-earth in Norse mythology of Midgard. And if I recall correctly, the eight sectors Sector 7 is the OG. <laughs> um, the eight sectors actually refer to the eight realms in North mythology as well, on Idrisil. But, um, of course, they're not named here. Fun little bit of trivia for you. Here's a thought for everyone. With the way technology and things is moving nowadays, do you think they'll be implementing things like this on trains and that in the future? Yep. Sectors 1 through 8. Do you reckon we'll have ID scans on trains like this? in the future, in real life. 
You could see it happening, couldn't you? The use of facial recognition on trains and things like that, perhaps. A link to a uh, national database. That's basically what we're seeing here. Don't see why not. They already have Amazon shops where there are no human staff. Exactly. They won't be the first. That's based on you scan in with your account when you first enter the store. And then they fa they've got facial recognition cameras all over the place. They're there to make sure you don't steal anything. It's quite a weird thought as well, isn't it? You know, Midgar as a city, you've got literally an upper plate and a lower plate. The lower plate is where the poor live. The upper plate is where the rich live. You can't help but wonder if maybe population growth becomes a, th a factor in everyday life now, if that's a way cities will evolve, where we have an upper and a lower level. Who knows? I remember this cutscene and thinking, oh my god, it looks so good. Hmm. It's an interesting way of looking at it. Population control compared to how to build in the future. quite a lot of pagan references throughout this game if you didn't know for, or for anyone who doesn't know that obviously we're talking about Gaia which is in uh, pagan belief the spirit of the earth the, the sentient spirit that the, that the planet has also references where we're talking about macro reactors and things like that where you know, talking about quite literally killing the planet through industry and using it for convenience and there's some uh, quite scary truth to that today when you look at climate change and how our development as a society can have an impact on the earth and its well-being. Um, ultimately, Avalanche here are no different to people like Greenpeace. Just far more radical. Yeah, I would say that's very, very similar, actually. Macro reactors equal oil refineries or oil farming. It's pretty similar, really, when you think that oil is what we obviously use for our electricity and uh, gas, yeah, draining the planet of Marco is the same as mining it for oil, funds our way of life. Hey, man. Let's have a look at the pillar. It's a massive structure. This single, I think, I think this is one particular, one of many pillars, if I remember correctly, that actually supports the plate above. Or is it actually just a single pillar? Supports the plate above, which allow, I'm trying to watch sports, I didn't come for deep, thoughtful conversation. You know, this is the funny thing, Matt. This game is steeped in deep thought. 
Just most people don't know it. Yeah, okay, Barrett, I'm coming. Fun fact. There is actually, if you don't have that conversation and you rush straight on through, there is actually hidden dialogue. I don't think I'll be able to get it now that I did that. But I may do. So there is actually a dialogue between Barrett and Cloud that you don't otherwise get unless you ignore everybody and go talk to him straight away. Let's see. Yeah? No, the hidden dialogue option is, is still prevalent even after Barrett calls for you out there. You want to meet your little baby? Of course, they're referring to the factor of Cloud and Tifa being childhood friends. Does of course Barrett know? <laughs> yes, okay. As of course Barrett knows that uh, Tifa is waiting inside. But if you don't go straight to Barrett and go and talk with other people, you won't actually get that little bit of dialogue and multiple choice. Fun fact for, for those of you who played this a million years ago and never, fa never found that. That's actually something I learnt uh, when I very first played the game, actually. I didn't realise it was a hidden thing. Uh, I learnt a few years ago that even veterans of, uh, who played this game to death, just like myself as a child, um, had never seen that nearly 15 years after its release. It's quite crazy, isn't it? I'll give tea for the flower. <laughs> Roly poly. So now we go to leave, and Barrett comes barging on in. I played this a million years ago in my cave with my electricity wheel, which was square back then. <laughs> Does feel like technology was perhaps that, that uh, dated all that time ago. Sometimes. We look at what we have now compared to this. I've got one little kitty cat beside me staring intently at what's happening next. <laughs> Let's have a drink. I have, yes. It's quite odd that, isn't it? Let's go get our money. <laughs> Perhaps. A mobilizing soldier. Nobody from Soldier today.
<laughs> so later, later bigs. No. Super speed. See, end of the day, Cloud is a cold mercenary. His whole deal is money. In the beginning. Pick a number between one and six. D and D related. Let's see how screwed you are. Four. Seven years ago. Flashback. Four again. Now we get a glimpse into Cloud and Tifa when they were kids. With his super long hair and his ponytail. Well, I'll say when they were kids, they were like teenagers. Possibly, would be my answer to that, if I'm being hunted by werewolves. Fortunately, quite knowledgeable on the subject of lycanthropy. Look at that ponytail. That would be unfortunate. A great Sephiroth. It was the best that Soldier had to offer at the time. <laughs> Do it. The infamous promise between Tifa and Cloud. Tifa ever gets in a bind, Cloud's come to save the day. A knight in shining armour. My hero. That sort of principle.
it's funny it's a uh, how many of you in the chat and in the comments for those watching this back as a VOD have ever had a moment where they feel like they've had a knight in shining armour come to your rescue in real life <laughs> Why Barrett couldn't take the lift, I don't know. Yes, very much so, Matt. 1500 gil. Chump change. <laughs> you can hear that in a Mr. T accent. I certainly can. What? I definitely think for remake and that they uh, got the right voice actor for all these characters. Octopath Traveller, I wish. That's certainly on the agenda to be picking up at some stage. I'm actually thinking that I'll be looking to pick up the pixel remasters from Final Fantasies 1 to 6 before I go Octopath Traveller, I think. Up we go. Sector five this time. Doesn't affect the relationship, but I know full well how to use materia, so. There we go. Alright, let's go kit ourselves out with some new equipment and new materia before we head out. Still on there, come back. I oh, will do. Thanks for hanging out, Matt. Hugely appreciated, buddy. See you again soon. Right, let's sort ourselves out with some iron bangles. Get those equipped right away because we want those extra materia slots for everyone, along with improved defense and magic defense. Planting ice. Give cloud cure as well. We'll then sell those bronze bangles. Not much back, but it's some. So of course this is supposed to be all like loosely tutorial based. Or not equip materia. Give Tifa ice materia. This always made me laugh. Playing about limit breaks. Pachoom. <laughs> Let's save our game. So T for one for row difference is an interesting one because she's a melee fighter, as we know. However, uh, 
we, if I remember right, I don't think there was anything up here, if I remember. Oh, dude. Back down we go. I'm gonna head in here next. Pick up some materia. Bought two fire by accident, but no, never mind. We have Tifa, Fire and Ice, Barrett, Fire, Cloud will stick with Lightning, as well as being the group's healer. Somehow I never actually saw that sign before. Those of you that don't know, that is actually, um, oh, uh, I've forgotten his name. Oh, I can't believe I've forgotten his name. The red-haired fella. Johnny. That's Johnny's parents and Johnny's house. All right, save up again. You'll notice I save my games quite frequently. Let's move on. Time to board the train and head on off to Sector 5. Time for Barrett to vent a little bit. <laughs> a little jump in his chair makes me laugh every time. ID checkpoint. Fun fact, if you go and talk to the guy who lives in the trains right at the end there, the homeless fella, he will give you a Phoenix Down if I remember rightly.
There we go. Thank you for my free high potion. There's like lots of little nuance bits. So next check happens. There's Johnny at the end there. And then Mr. Sunglasses steals our money. Make sure you talk to him before uh, he gets away. Again, run out of time. That's it, just stuck on the train and it's game over. Quite a few instant game over scenarios here. <laughs> Time for the rest of Avala Team Avalanche to go into recon mode. <laughs> that music though. I don't remember if we go if we go back backwards, is it an endless loop? I don't remember fully. I think it is. Oh, we get to have Tifa in combat. Hooray! Punch them robots. Yeah, and unlike in Remake, when a character gets their limit break, your melee attack option disappears. And you can't attack. That's top Tifa's health off. More random encounters. That was something they added into the later Final Fantasy games. So in the earlier ones, if you attacked, set to attack a target, and that target was already knocked out, um, your attack would straight up miss because you would attack where an enemy wasn't there anymore. Look inside. Creepy, creepy.
There we go. Bow. It's funny how obviously different the characters look compared to the backdrop. Processing power of moving parts compared to something that's static like this. It's always quite interesting, I find. I'm trying to remember. Was there a reason to go up the other way? I don't remember. Now, of course, the fun fact here is these uh, blue goos were uh, originally back row, but now that the front row has been KO'd, there's no longer a back row to be had. They're all on the same row now. I don't, don't remember there being a reason to go the other way. The other way just puts you out there, I think. I'll check if I'm right. Oh shit. Poor Jessie, she tried. There we go. I will be right back, team.
and I'm back. Apologies. Moving on. Straight into combat, apparently. Get rid of the front row. Try and save some of our MP now. second team. Shan't be a moment. Hello Raven, <laughs> enjoying the heat, I know I'm not, <laughs> good to see you in chat. What's your thoughts on this so far? game wise I know it's not it is too hot I fully agree I know retro RPGs generally aren't up your alley because graphics are a, can be a, a holdover for you yeah <laughs> graphics are bad they're not bad actually That's the funny thing, they're not bad, bad. By any standard. They just suffer from being... nearly... let me think... 20, 20 plus years old? Imagine if Monster Hunter had these graphics. The early Monster Hunters did. Way about when. But I understand your position. See, for me, personally, see, look at the backdrop. The backlog looks so good. It's the sprites that are not so good. Now, if you look at the backdrop and everything, considering it's a PS1 game, yeah, really good. It's the sprites that are not brilliant, but for the time, they were excellent. Here's a tidbit of flashback for you. 
You saw this at the very start of uh, Rebirth. Uh, it was one of the best of this time, graphically. Combat encounter right there. Oh, against so many machine guns as well. Not the time. <laughs> Good. That's only a good thing. You're a queen anyway. You're my queen. Get that crit, Tifa. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. There we go, next bomb set. Remote detonation this time. However, the game doesn't tell you that. Don't you start with moon stuff. <laughs> you have to wait for Matt streams to do that. All right, we're an hour and six in and we're on the cusp of blowing up a second reactor. Not bad for a couple of days' work for Avalanche, is it? Raven, what do you feel about the story that you know of this so far? Be interested to get your opinion. And anybody who's uh, watching this back as a VOD, actually, uh, let me know what your experiences and thoughts are about the story of the OG. <laughs> I don't know. What are you like? Alright. We want to try and save these limits as much as possible. Unfortunately, we've got enough magic to keep going. See, if I'm if I'm right in saying so, Raven, you don't know the full story, do you? how it ends and everything. You perhaps know as far as you've seen in Rebirth thus, thus far, what I've played of the new one. Am I right in saying that? Yeah. No, but that's good, because... It's super interesting for me to see your reactions to everything. I get to relive it for the, the first time through you, so that's something really nice for me personally. I'll start throwing some ethers down soon.
Uh, run a quick. Oh shit. Cool. That's good timing. Full on uh, limit breaks for everyone. So that works out really well. Now they do have a uh, mini game similar to this one in um, remake at the time. That um, too slow. Two, three. Two, three. God damn it. Wow, why do I suck? Oh my god. I never have this problem. Pressures of being on stream, eh? There we go. Okay. So I think rather than spending all the ethers we've got, we're going to tent up and do it that way. Uh, some of you may know from the uh, from remake what's coming. Uh, next boss fight. With Air Buster. Here he comes. Now he's, a, he's holographic in uh, the in remake, but he's in the flesh in the OG. Good damn President Shinra. <laughs> King Vermin! <laughs> Here he comes. Techno soldier. Off he goes. Running away like the coward he is. Bust him up. Let's go. What do you make of the music, Raven, for combat? I personally think the soundtrack is excellent to this. I 
That's it, he's done. Those three limit breaks trashed him at the beginning. Very easy boss fight, actually. With those three limit breaks, it made it very easy. Definitely easier than I remember. <laughs> but then I've never been in a position of... Oh, that's okay. That's no problem. Apologies for my uh, delay in responding, actually. Ah, I see. Not to worry. Oh, poor Cloud. Wait! Wee. I remember seeing that footage on the trailer way back when before this was released and I was like, oh no. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you said I'll tell you something though. Go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, Cloud talking to himself inside his own head. If you didn't know. Hey, who are you? It's been great watching Cloud etc. go from odd looking pixels to the characters. They are now. Love it. They did so well. Yeah. Improvements in technology has just meant they're more and more brought to life. You know, it's like for me growing up, I have text on a screen, but your imagination fills in the rest for what they sound like to you. You know? You have to imagine what they sound like. And actually... I look at Remake and I look at Rebirth now and I think to myself, absolutely bang up job in terms of who they picked for their voice respective voice actors. Poor Cloud falling through the ceiling of a church. Flower bed. Sephiroth is still the best character in my opinion, it's his hair. <laughs> he does have very good hair, there is no doubt about that. It's a, it's a tie-in here to Aerith being a member of the Setra or the Ancients. Hair and is real. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact. You were the slum drunk. Um, the dialogue you have with each character as well as like who's chosen for being part in the party and things like that throughout the game actually affects the story in terms of um, certain events that happen later on. But we'll get to those when uh, we get to them in the actual game. I can talk about that. You just don't know how to use it. Definitely not the case, Cloud. Definitely not the case. Yeah, so the level of interaction I'll have with Aerith, with Barrett, with Tifa. Um, yeah, I don't mind talking some more. This location also comes up in uh, the Advent Children movie just out of interest or something worth noting might it see mistranslation fun fact it is labeled as Eris 
in the English translation here, but we all know. It should be... Aerith. Interesting fact, but that... There you go. It should be... It was named Eris for some reason in the uh, English translation, when it should have been Aerith all along. Look who we have here, sneaking in the background. Reno of the Turks. Now for those of you, there is... There is a reference there to a certain somebody, those of you who have played Crisis Core, whether it be on the PSP or Crisis Core Reunion on, uh, well, all platforms nowadays, will know exactly the uh, reference to that point there, which is super interesting. <laughs> the fact that clouds readily just are like, okay, a date. Wouldn't you if you were Cloud? Wouldn't I what? Go on a date readily. I don't think so, because you're in that place of... I just fell through... from the Sector 5 plate down into the Sector 5 slums through a church roof into a flower bed knowing that I'm a mercenary who is r wrapped up in so much danger. Can't be putting people in danger. The amusement here. Don't step on the flowers immediately steps on the flowers. <laughs> you just stepped on them yourself. All right, here we are inside. Inside the Sector 5 church, which is pretty trashed, actually. Oh, Cloud has his limit break again. Okay, then. Yeah, Aerith takes one out all on her own. <laughs> With that in mind, actually, we need to sort our equipment out because... We've got ourselves a Titan Bangle, which we can give to Cloud. And we can then give that Iron Bangle to Aerith. Who definitely warrants the use of some materia here. So, one thing that was quite nice is the fact that uh, it removes the materia from party members you're not with in the beginning, during the Midgar section of the game. I'm assuming all the all of this is like damage and that dealt with from the explosion above and cloud falling through the roof. Nah. -uh. That moment where it's like, I'll oh, make sure they won't get through. They have guns. I have a sword. The 
Fun fact here, I can either have Aerith do the fighting and... get her some EXP. If I remember rightly, it's this one. I wish my arm was on so I could reach this lot on my shoulder. <laughs> There we go. Avoids one bit of combat for Aerith. Pretty sure it's this one. This, of course, wasn't in the remake. They had you uh, deal with all the whispers before. Aerith being very helpless. There we go. Aerith is safe. this way across the support beams of the church where we'll just leisurely walk across the beams here it does make me laugh how big the character models are here compared to the size of the church look at it and think to myself that the church itself is like a doll's church. I remember from that moment onwards hating the Turks. <laughs> Maybe a little. But yeah, as those of you who've played Crisis Core and obviously played through this before, we also know that Aerith has some experience with the Turks already in her backstory. Yeah, that's very true. The, the heat is quite intense at the moment. <laughs> Cloud and Aerith have a very interesting relationship between them. Case in point, Aerith knows about the glow in Cloud's eyes and significance of that with Soldier. Obviously she doesn't want to talk about it. It's interesting because they've only just met, of course, at this stage. Fun fact, to the right down there is uh, towards the city outskirts of Midgar. Later on. Bit more XP apparently. No stealing stuff today. Oh, moving on. Into Sector 5. And then turn the slums. This is an interesting one for those of you who know the expanded story. It's 
This is missable, by the way. You don't have to go in this house. That right there is what's significant. That man has a tattoo. I think it's the number two. If you know, you know. If you know what that means, put it in the comments if you watch this back as a VOD over on YouTube. Be interesting to see just how many of you who watch these videos back actually know what that means. Woof woof doggo. Woof woof. Alright, one collectible in this game. The first one is found in this room. Or this house, in fact. We have to go upstairs and look at these posters. Turtle Paradise. So if you've played Final Fantasy VII Intermission, you will know what the uh, Turtle's Paradise is. It's a bar over in Wutai. More on that later. But one thing to do as a collectible is make sure you read and find all of these Turtle Paradise flyers. Half now, so we have a proper lay down, have a headache. OK, Raven. Take it easy. I uh, will see you very soon. Thanks for hanging out. Now, fun fact. There is a drawer here, which it talks about the only the top and bottom drawer, as I'll show you here. See? You can open the top or bottom drawer and they have nothing inside. However, talk to the little boy. No one will find it. Top drawer and the bottom one. And you will find, if you go back to the drawers, there is a hidden drawer between the two of them. And it's got five gill in it. If you take it, you will find some dialogue happens later on. Or you can leave it and nothing will happen. We're going to leave it because we're not stealing five gil from a little kid. So we've got, which one is which? This is the item store? Yeah. We won't pick up anything for now. Materia store, which, if I recall, has all the same material we have now. So we don't need any more of that right now. I don't think so, anyway. What we do want, however, is to head into this little van over here. We want to talk to this guy. Weapons store because he will have Titan Bangles for everyone. So we want three more. We can, of course, equip Aerith with hers now. Blah blah blah. He's a weapons store but only sells accessories. And we can sell on. That bangle there. Now let's head on through to Aerith's house. But before we go inside, what we want to do is pick up this ether and pick up this cover material, which is very handy for this section of the game. Sorry, Cloud, you're going to have to sacrifice fire magic oh wait no we want you to sacrifice your lightning magic for fire and we'll give Aerith all three of our elemental magics for now reason being is we want cloud to be able to protect Aerith with cover materia we'll save our game once more We'll head on inside. And we get to meet meet Elmira.
<laughs> Sign of the times. Time for a little one-to-one -one with Elmira now. <laughs> Man. Flashback time. Ah, oh, Claudia. Clouds, Mum. bed was so damn comfy. We don't want to go out just yet, we would like our potion and Phoenix Downs first. Now fun thing here, if you run, you have to walk by that section all over again. You can run downstairs, just not upstairs. Save our game again. So of course we're doing Elmira's, conducting Elmira's wish really and uh, heading on out trying to get back to Sector 7 without Aerith knowing until this happens. <laughs> Here we go. Now you'll remember, if you've played the remake, you'll know this is the section with all of the hands, the hand lift things. As you can see, some of them scattered around here. However, we don't have to deal with all of that here. There's cover material in action there. There is a benefit to using all the limit breaks early in the game. There are different parameters throughout the game to unlock each limit break as the game progresses. So even on little enemies like that, it's worth using them to begin with. Let me down. Round we go. There we go. A lot quicker in this game, isn't it, to get through that section? <laughs> Funny how quick we've got to this point compared to Remake where they fleshed it out an awful lot.
Now again, if you've played Crisis Core or know Aerith's backstory, you'll see that you'll know the significance of this little slide. for on Chocobo Sam's carriage. Welcome everybody to Wall Market. Bam, bam, bam. If I recall correctly, oh no, save point is up here. Okay, I think that wraps us up for today's stream. Thank you so much to Skater Matt and Raven for hanging out, and I believe there was possibly some others of you hanging around in the background, so I appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out. It's been hugely appreciated. I hope you've enjoyed the first part of what's going to be a little fun little adventure um, in Final Fantasy VII, the OG from the PS1. Um, so like I mentioned at the start of the stream, I'll be repeating this game and picking this up in two weeks time when we stream again or in, uh, we stream every Tuesday, but Final Fantasy will uh, make a return every two, every second Tuesday. So every fortnight, um, alternating with community games or multiplayer games with uh, other members of the community uh, on alternate weeks so you will be community games one week back to single player final fantasy stories uh the week after alternating each week uh streams to begin at 8 p.m gmt that's 8 p.m gmt uh here in the uk if you can make it obviously it's hugely appreciated if you're watching this back as, as a vod thank you very much for doing so first of all and taking time out of your day whether morning afternoon lunchtime or nighttime it's hugely appreciated as always and if you haven't already do hit that subscribe button uh, and over on twitch just uh, smash your buster sword on that follow button hugely appreciated um as always but thanks again everybody it has been very fun coming back to a title that is childhood defining for me and i look forward to seeing you all again next time until then, bye for now.